Madam Speaker, the Honourable Prime Minister, the Honourable Leader of Opposition, the Honourable Leader of the NFP, <coughs> and the Honourable Members. Madam Speaker, first of all, I wish to say something regarding the decorum of this House, this very august House. It is sad to see that this has today been compromised. The very thing, the very thing that makes this House august is its decorum in which debate and the manner in which debate takes place. The one thing that should not be compromised is that very decorum. The comments that were made this morning, Madam Speaker, were absolutely uncalled for. And the honourable member responsible needs to let go of the obsession with the military. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vigorous, healthy debate, Madam Speaker, is great, but derogatory comments are absolutely unnecessary and certainly not honourable. Yeah, yeah. All, all members of this House need to remember that when they got elected, they were bestowed with the title honourable. There is a reason for this, and we are required to be honourable in our roles at all times, and all prejudice should be left, prejudices should be left outside the door. Therefore, it is my humble opinion, Madam Speaker, that such a serious breach of decorum, this actually calls for reprimand. Thank you for giving me this opportunity, Madam Speaker, to deliver my first statement for the year. I'd like to focus my statement on the efforts of the Fijian government to increase Fiji's presence and recognition in the growing international markets such as India. But there is one other thing that needs comment, Madam Speaker. And before I start, I wish to declare my support to the Honourable Prime Minister, Prime Minister's proposition to change our national flag and transforming it to reflect a truly modern and independent nation. Madam Speaker, everyone from the government side of the House stands behind the Prime Minister in the initiative to bring in a new Fijian flag. We got a history lesson yesterday, Madam Speaker, but in British history. We now have a history, we, we have, Madam Speaker, we now have a history of our own, Madam Speaker. And we need a truly Fijian flag, Madam Speaker. I allude to the statement made by the Honourable Member from the Opposition that the Union Jack needs to be maintained in the Fijian flag, mainly because its creation in 1603 was by uniting three nations, that is England, Ireland and Scotland, under the Union of James or the Union Jack, and creating a new nation with one flag. Madam Speaker, this is where we are at, the process of creation. The creation of a bold, new, vibrant and patriotic Fiji. Apart from, yeah, yeah. Apart from Fiji, there are only three other independent states that maintain the Union Jack on their flags, which are Australia, New Zealand, and Tuvalu. And we all know about the rumblings in Australia and New Zealand, Madam Speaker. Just as we are now all Fijians, we will soon be getting a new flag that will be totally Fijian, Madam Speaker. And maybe, just maybe, just maybe that might turn the other side of the house into a more all-encompassing bunch of Fijians that care about all Fijians, Madam Speaker. We respect our history, Madam Speaker. We respect our history, and there is a lot to learn from the past. However, in order for us to move forward as a new and stronger nation, we need to let go of the past and bring in change that is representative of who we are, truly Fijian. Therefore, I wish to reiterate, Madam Speaker, my support for the vision of our Honourable Prime Minister that he has for our beloved nation. <laughs> Madam Speaker. Is there a point of order? Point of order, Madam Speaker. Uh, it's very clear that the ministerial statements, after they are made, the opposition provides his response. There is no debate on it anymore. And the Honourable Member spent a good part of his introduction talking about the flag issue which the Prime Minister has already talked about. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the Honourable Member has 20 minutes and he is aware of that. And whatever he says in the 20 minutes is his own prerogative.
You may continue. Um, on the Madam Speaker, it's my 20 minutes. And I see the flags missing from all three of them. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Speaker, the ministerial statement is to inform this August House of the recent developments during my visit to India in relation to marketing Fiji as an attractive tourism destination in the Indian subcontinent and the Asian region. Madam Speaker, I'm glad to inform the House that last year the visitor arrival numbers reached a new, new height of 692,630, which was a 5.3% increase over the same period in 2013. And the number then was 657,706. This has been the result of some aggressive marketing and promotion of Fiji in the various markets, especially our non-traditional markets such as Asia. Indian visitor arrivals, Madam Speaker, have grown by 8.2% in 2014 as the visitor number reached 3,057 when compared to 2013 when it was 2,826. And Madam Speaker, the four cities that were visited were New Delhi, Mumbai, Calcutta and Chennai. And these are areas from where the majority of the high-end Indian travellers are from. We are not able to break down the total Indian visitor numbers by cities or by regions, as the old visitor survey done by Fiji Visitors Bureau is archaic, and it does not provide that detailed information. But currently, the Fijian government is in the process of revamping and improving the system so that we can have better information. Furthermore, Madam Speaker, India is central to our plans to expand the non-traditional markets, and we expect 2015 to be a bumper year in terms of visitor arrivals and earnings from the subcontinent. Madam Speaker, as I had stated in my inaugural address, our strategy is to focus on quality rather than quantity. It is important that we target high quality, high yielding tourists to our shores in order to derive maximum sustainable results from our precious, finite and delicate tourism resources and infrastructure. It is a well-established fact that tourists from India are amongst the highest spenders, not only in the Fijian market, but in most international destinations. On average, an Indian tourist family could spend approximately $6,000 in a week's stay in Fiji, as opposed to and compared to roughly $2,000 by other tourists. Therefore, Madam Speaker, in order to promote Fiji to the Indian traveler, we have for the past few years undertaken roadshows in key Indian cities. As I said earlier, this, this year we had targeted New Delhi, Calcutta, Mumbai, and for the first time in Chennai. Madam Speaker, this year's roadshow was spearheaded obviously by the Fijian government, and both the Assistant Minister and I, and senior officials from the Ministry and Tourism Fiji, and key industry players such as Fiji Airways and people from the accommodation sector and tour operators. This high level of attendance denoted the importance that the Fijian government now places on the Indian market, which was never done before. The positive response received from the Indian traveller, travel and tourism trade partners was an indication of growing knowledge of Fiji as a tourist destination. For the first time in, uh, in India, Fiji has now partnered with a world-renowned world Swiss-based Kwoni travel agent. And this was, the, the, this was launched by virtue of a brochure together with Tourism Fiji. We will now build our image in the Indian market with a company that has 60 years of experience in India and delivers dream holiday destinations to millions of travellers. We are now part of that dream, Madam Speaker. One wonders why the old Fiji Visitors Bureau did not, not, did not take notice of China and India a whole lot earlier. Furthermore, Madam Speaker, Fiji is establishing itself as a location for conventions and meetings, especially for the Indian market, a market that is willing to travel far and wide to host and attend conventions and meetings. One of the main hurdles which we face with respect to all of this and in the meetings was the need for better flight connectivity between Fiji and India. Our national airline, Fiji Airways, currently flies directly to Hong Kong. However, there is scope to grow the numbers by introducing new flights to other ports such as Singapore, which is actually a preferred stopover for Indians. Shanghai is another one, and there's maybe talk of a direct flight from Fiji to India. At this point, Madam Speaker, I am pleased to see that the efforts of our tourism stakeholders, namely the Fijian tour operators who have worked to introduce charter flights between Shanghai and Nandi. In fact, there is one due to come in this weekend. 
The success of this initiative will provide the impetus for Fiji Airways to work on introducing a new route directly to China, Madam Speaker. A similar arrangement can be explored for the Indian market. Madam Speaker, at this point it is worth noting that the new route initiatives have been developed independently and without the involvement of Qantas. We now have strong partnerships developed with prominent travel agents and senior representatives of the Travel Agents Association of India uh, will also help boost arrivals from this emerging market. Madam Speaker, we must also note that there are synergies that exist and they are to be drawn from having a successful film industry and the inflow of tourists and investment. Hence the three, the three agencies, namely Tour Tourism Fiji, Film Fiji and Investment Fiji will continue to work together in the marketing and promotions campaigns to maximize exposure in India. The Fijian government will continue to provide support and resources to tourism Fiji in their global marketing of Fiji and focusing on high yielding and rapidly expanding markets in, such as India. <coughs> Madam Speaker, before I conclude my statement, well within the 20 minutes, with regards to the visit to India, I wish also to inform this august house that I had the opportunity to collaborate and join efforts with the Honourable Minister for Agriculture, as mentioned by him earlier. Together we met with the Indian government to discuss areas of assistance and support for the sector. Both our ministries share the objective of raising the quality and supply of our Fijian grown products to furnish the Fijian tourism industry and further increase and multiply the benefits from a sector which is the backbone of our economy. There is a drive from the, within the ministry to fill our hotels and resorts with Fijian grown products with the assistance of our agriculture ministry and for which I commend the minister. Madam Speaker, I assure you that the Fijian government is fully committed to the vision, of the, to the vision for the industry as outlined in my maiden speech, which is to position Fiji as the hub of tourism in the Asia Pacific region and to grow the industry by 100% in 2020. Madam Speaker, I thank you again for this opportunity for allowing me to make my statement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Honourable Minister, I thank you for your statement. I will now invite uh, the Leader of Opposition and a representative to provide a response. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise to make commentaries on the um, presentation by the uh, Honourable Minister. At the outset, Madam Speaker, the flag issue, very simple. Put it on referendum. Very simple. Very simple, Madam Speaker. Referendum. We had children here last Thursday, Madam Speaker. 15 and 16 year old came for a tour of Parliament. Honorable Ndulaik and I met them and they wanted to know what we do and we spoke and gave them some rundown and uh, said, look, for example, the flag, and they just said no. 15, 16 year old. So, Madam Speaker, let's just put it on referendum and put this flag to rest. Referendum. While you are at it, while you're at it, Madam Speaker, can I just can I just can I just ask one thing, Madam Speaker? Our military officers in the Commonwealth, the people they were, Lieutenant, Second Lieutenant, and Third Lieutenant, in the Commonwealth, it is a cross of St. George. And he says, I die for Christ. What, what about a Fiji military? Do, do they wear the same do they wear the same cross, Madam Speaker? This is a confused government, Madam Speaker. And they are afraid of a referendum because early in the peace, the people of Fiji will say, listen, we voted you to give, give us electricity, water. Bus fare or whatever. <laughs> Not saying something you something big like the flag, Madam Speaker. Can we milk and milk and milk? When, when do we get to the milk? But Madam Speaker, keep it short. Referendum and it'll give give all this thing a rest. Referendum, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Two reasons, Madam Speaker. I love the commentaries about FEB. I I was CEO of FEB, Madam Speaker. If FEB had been in charge with the SDL. The visa arrival this year would be 925,000 visitors. 925,000 visitors. Yep. Not, not 700,000 like they say. Yeah. Yep. They, they, 
can't stop tourism, Madam Speaker, so, 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 in a, such a huge way. A shortfall of 225,000. Madam Speaker? Our people, Madam Speaker, our workers, tourism today is seven months of plenty, five months of famine. With 925,000 a million visitors, it could be 11 months of plenty and one month of famine. With this government, the famine will continue for a long, long time, Madam Speaker. <laughs> But as we, got, <clears throat> we keep talking about quality over quantity. As I've said before, the quality of the products in Fiji are of a high class. You bring in a million visitors, they will use these high quality products, high yield, and there's no issue about degrading our yield as, as, the, as this side of the house, that side of the house continues to hop on. This is a great product, and it has been marketed well from the beginning. I love this talk about new synergies and new that and the FEB didn't do it. Madam Speaker, we have been doing that all this while and the growth, and the growth pattern was, was such that we were going to get a million visitors by 2016. This guy, this, I'm sorry, this, this government over here, Madam Speaker, I think they'll get a million in what, five or six years time. I have said many times, we offer to you, let's sit together, we have the guys who can do it, yeah. We put a, a good board together. Don't, don't be afraid of our own people and bring in expert. Yeah, we can do it, Madam Speaker. And Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, I love this talk about Qantas. Qantas last six months made $370 million profit in Australian currency. They are on the way back. And if Qantas had been here with us, Madam Speaker, we would not have had all this hiatus that we have been having with, his, uh, with all this A3. A3 what do you got now? The Airbus that we have. Madam Speaker, there is, you can get an Airbus 320 from the Mojave Desert for about $30 million. Yep. Yes, here we paid, we paid $1.1 billion for three, Madam Speaker. It's, it, it's, a, it's a disaster that, is, that needs to be corrected, Madam Speaker. And we offer again. Please. Let's sit together. We can, we can show you how it's done properly and get our people fully employed and get, and, and get this country growing again, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. I thank the Honorable Member for his response. I will now invite the uh, representative from NFP. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I uh, respond to the Minister's statement. I deal briefly with the, in response with the issues that he raised on the issue of the flag, Madam Speaker. Uh, these, the flag is usually a symbol of uh, stability that roots us in our history, every country. You don't change it, uh, you wake up in the morning, you feel like you change, you want to go and have a shower and have a change, you don't wake up and go and have to change the flag. Because it signifies instability, which we are already kind of famous for, but that will bring it home. You didn't want to move along. On the issue of decorum in the House, Madam Speaker, I will refer to one specific incident, but I will not go into detail. From the other side, an honorable member who really should be the most senior member of this House, uh, and gestures that he made on his return to the budget session viewed by us on this side of the chamber. Madam Speaker, but we are not crybabies. We, uh, you know. <laughs> That's on the issue of decorum, Madam Speaker. There, that was far worse. And, and, and we, let it slip because as we say, Madam Speaker, we are much bigger than that and much more honorable. <laughs> that was the flag. And on the issue of uh, uh, tourism and trade, Madam Speaker, we welcome the allocation of 23.5 million to the Fiji Visitors Bureau. Tourism Fiji. Tourism Fiji. Yes. It, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Ngavo. Uh, but we are concerned, however, Madam Speaker, 
that tourism numbers have only grown by 43,000 uh, between 2009 and 2013. The peak was in 2011, uh, still a long way from the 1 million target. Uh, Fiji Airways has 300,000, sorry, 468 seats available to contribute. If Fiji Airways does twice daily, all of its destinations still won't come close to the figure that's uh, the target. Madam Speaker, that's all we wish to say on the issue of the tourism, uh, which the Minister left to the end. I won't expand on the other things that he addressed. I'm sure common sense will prevail.